So good morning, everybody. Today, let's start with an experiment. See the structure you're in? If you're online or here in the building, look around you for a moment. Try to get a picture of the building or the car, wherever you're at, in your mind, okay? Take a look, appreciate that structure. Different parts, how they're formed, they're put together, the different colors, the small and the large parts, all the materials used to form the structure. If you want to, I can give you a moment, you can stand up, you can feel a wall, or feel something if you want to. No one's taking me up on it, so okay. Okay, we got one. All right. Does everybody have a good picture of where they're at in their head? Okay? So can you close your eyes and picture it? Try that. Close your eyes for a moment and see if you can picture the building. Okay, good. You can open your eyes. Everybody got it? Or you fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. Everybody back awake? All right. Now, here comes the experiment part. If you got a timer on your phones, well, okay. I'll set the timer so nobody don't have a bunch of alarms going off. Let's do a timer on the phones for a minute. And then for the next minute, do whatever you got to do to recreate the structure that you're in. See some confused looks. Okay, okay, all right. How about five minutes? Five minutes good? A little bit longer, right? Ready? No, okay, all right. So, you're probably saying, this guy's smoking something pretty strong to be asking us to recreate a building or wherever we're at in a few minutes, right? Especially if you're in a car or the outside, better yet, the outside world. That's kind of crazy, right? However, in truth, I absolutely agree with you. It's an impossible task. The task I'm going to ask you, rebuild a structure that took way longer than five minutes. In only five minutes. No prep, no materials, no space, no real chance of completing the project, right? It's kind of unfair. But bear with me and hopefully this will make sense. God could do it, couldn't he? Let's turn back to the very beginning of things. Genesis 1, verse 3 and 5. Marcus, can you uh, click the slides for me? Thank you. All right. So Genesis 1, 3, and 5. I notice this. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Now notice this, the very first part of that, then God said. That's incredible. Boom, universe is formed just by speaking to him. That's power. He's got no trouble making incredible structures formed simply at his command. And we see that, we're evidence all around us. So imagine if we had that power. It's like before lunchtime, so imagine if you could say, that to be a cheeseburger. Boom, you got lunch. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? That would be really, really cool. We don't work that way, though, do we? For each of us who have grown up, think about how we were formed and how we were raised. Did we come out of the womb fully formed like we are today? Now, for me, that's a big note. I was this little wrinkly fellow who couldn't do much of anything. Now I can do all sorts of stuff. Big difference between that little guy that came out. So, how did we get here? How does that work? Let's find out how God works with humans to get us off to be better, better than when we came to him. Let's, we're still in Genesis, so let's turn a little bit further. Take a look at an interesting situation with Lot and his family. It's a pretty famous story. This is when two angels are coming, and they're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's the scene where Lot's in. They've had a very long night. A lot of stuff's going on. And these two angels have said, get out, we're tearing down the town. And so that's the setting. And so this is the very next morning. So, Genesis 19. Everybody's got that. Genesis 19, beginning in verse 15. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise! 
Take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. These two angels took Lot, his wife, the two daughters, and led them out of the city by their hand to safety. Now, we'd like to think that if we were told a bomb was going to go off in the building or in this town, it's going to wipe out the whole town, we'd do the sensible thing and run! Get out of there, right? That's the only way to, to, hear, to get news like that and take off as fast as you can. However, in reality, sometimes we take a moment or two or a few too many to process, right? We get in shock. And I kind of think that's what's happening here with Lot and his family. They're lingering because like, what? My house? This whole thing's going down? And look what God did to them. He took each one of them by the hand and let them out. He was gentle. He was merciful. And God's good to us like that, isn't he? He was merciful to Lot and his family. Sometimes when we don't know what to do, God does. And he guides us. Now, God is God. And we just talked about how he could make the universe form in an instant, right? He spoke, and he got light and darkness to form the universe. Why didn't God go, poof, and move him outside the city? You ever think about that? Why did he take such tender care with him? Now, he's God. He could do that. He absolutely could. We just read about how he has the power. So why didn't he? Well, if Lot and his family were in so much shock of the news, they were just kind of stuck there all like, well, what do we do? If they got poofed out of the sea, they'd probably run around like this guy. And he'd be screaming, ah! I mean, that's not the way to talk to somebody who's in shock, right? God knew this. He knew what humans needed. He knew what their situation was, and he let them out. He was merciful to them. He instructed his angels, here's what they need, here's how you do it. Take them out. And he did. God can build structures in an instant. He can do anything he wants to. He could have given us the power to do the same. But instead, we have to take a much slower route, don't we? We have to plan. We're going back to the, the building. We got a plan to build that building, right? We got to gather the materials. We got to train and learn the required skills to actually build it. And then slowly build piece by piece, section by section, until it's done. And what are we building as a human? That job's never done, right? It's just passed on to the human to raise themselves. Now, back to that question. When we're born, we're not fully formed yet, are we? No. We as humans have to be built. God could go poof and pop us in existence fully grown. It's fully possible. It's within his power. We could be up there, suit and tie the first day, walking around. But we're not. We got to take this long, weird journey called growing up, which honestly never actually ends. Become who we are, who we're going to become. So why did he give us that journey? Why do you do that? Well, it's similar to a lot in the situation. It's what we need. It's how humans work. Those experiences, those many, many, many mistakes we make, those lessons we're taught, the ones we actually learn, keep with us, they shape us, don't they? We're not supernatural. We don't come out knowing all things and being able to do all things. God gave us the ability to learn and learn many things. If we're going to be creating a structure like this, it doesn't happen overnight, right? If you're going to be creating your own person, it doesn't happen overnight. But if we did, say we could create a structure like this overnight, if we had that power, what would we learn if we could go poof and have it appear? I see some heads shaking, right? Nothing. 
If all we did was go poof and it happened, that's not much of a learning process. But if we built something, even something simple, how much do we learn in the process of it? How many of you out there have built stuff? Even little things, models, like even pair of airplanes. Pretty much everybody, right? Yeah. When you're doing that, you learn a lot. Even if it's something simple like well, which, doing a paper airplane, which way do you fold the paper? How do you make it smoother? You learn things as you go. The very first one versus the very last one, it's a big difference because you've learned more. The more complex, the more time it took, the more we learn. Just to be able to complete the project and all the small lessons along the way, we learn from it. And that's why we don't come out fully formed. Why we can't go poof and have a building appear. Honestly, we've got a lot to learn. We always do. We always will, no matter where we're at. And that's why God did what he did. So if this is why we have this long, weird journey that we're on, how does that work? Well, let's go back to the book that God gave us, the message. Now, God gave us a message that we can learn from all of our lives, right? You never, no matter how many times you've read it, no matter how many times you've looked at it, there's always something new there. It's a beautiful message. It starts at the beginning of the universe, ends with the end of the universe, covers man falling time after time, to God finally coming down and, and saving us from ourselves, giving us a path back to Him. Beautiful story. Best that's ever been written. Did you know the whole Bible could be summed up in a few words? You've actually already heard them today. Remember the verse we read? Let's turn back to that for a moment and read it. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Begin in verse 36. And this is actually one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Begin in verse 36, it reads, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord with your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In a very few succinct and powerful words, God sums up his great message to us. Those words are beautiful. But if the Bible was just those words, if we got straight to the bottom line, how would we do? That's all you had to go with. Not so well, right? That's, that's the meaning. That is the structure and the meaning of the whole Bible. It's the, the message you hear from beginning to end. Love God. Love your neighbor. And no matter how many different stories, that's what they boil down to. Especially the first one. I love God. Now, We don't really work with just a few verses, right? Once we know it, we can work with it. But we need that backstory, that exposition, the ups, the downs, the whole word. We need the examples, the lessons of mistakes, the good, the bad, the long list that takes forever to read through, the exciting and the not so exciting parts. They all go in to make up that beautiful story, right? If it's all climax, if it's all action, it's not the same if you've got those ups and downs and the periods of peace. Like in Revelation. Revelation is a lot of action. But you'll find around chapter 7, there's a break. There's a peace. There's a respite. He talks to the saints. God knew we need those breaks back and forth. He gave us that message that is so incredible. They all go together to make that wonderful message that we can spend a lifetime learning from. He put that message to us the way he did on purpose. We can't handle, and we don't need poof, do we? We need someone who is there for us, the time spent with us. We need the reality, the hard lessons, the comfort, the assurances, the pushes to be better, do more, keep on going even when things are incredibly tough. You probably know where I'm going with this, don't you? This weekend, we celebrate our fathers, our ones here on earth. 
You ever think God gave us them too for a reason, the way we did? Fathers don't go poof and have magically well-formed kids, do they? For the Carlos. Did your kids come out like they are? That's a lot of work, right? <laughs> a lot of years, many years. You've got some awesome kids. But it takes a lot of time. It's not just a boom and they're done. And there's a reason for that. God gave fathers a wonderful job of spending time, both when easy and not so easy, with their children. Because that's what it takes to get that well-functioning kid. Just not like we couldn't recreate the building in a moment. Our fathers raise us like don't like raise us like that either. Like we're building a structure, like a God built the wonderful message that He gave to us. Our fathers took time with us, right? Shared the lives with us. Guide us as best they could until it's time to give us over to us for us to guide ourselves. But God, He's always the Father. We're always the child. But as humans, we actually get to see from both sides. We get a cycle to life. We get to see things from both sides. And we get to see what it's like to be the child. And for some of us, we actually get to see what it's like to be the father, too. And I can tell you, once you get to see that the other side of things, you learn to appreciate your own father so very, very much more. And my dad, who's online today, thank you so very much for putting up with me. I appreciate it and I love you. And for all the dads out there, thank you for all that you've done. God gave us these experiences for a reason, didn't he? And it's also ultimately to appreciate him. These things we have go through here on earth, we can learn to actually see how things work in heaven. If you look at all of us humans as God's children, imagine the gray hair that God would have with all of us, right? He puts up with a lot. <laughs> And God gave us examples so he can get a glimpse of that so we can get a glimpse of that relationship that he has to us. You ever wonder why God puts up with us? I mean, he's the Lord of the universe. He speaks in the universe forms, and yet for all of our frailty and all of our issues, he still loves us. And I think we can get a glimpse of that with our human fathers too. Have you ever seen a father and a newborn child? What has that newborn child done for the father at that moment? Well, he's pooped his diaper. He's cried a lot. He's made a mess of things. He's kept him awake at night. Has he really done much to, to endear love? Not really. But how much does that father love that child when they hold him in their arms and look at him? That father says, I'm never going to let anything happen to this child. I'm going to I love this little kid. I can see so much potential, so much promise. It's amazing. And if you think about it, that's kind of how God sees us. We can't do much for God, but he sees the potential, the promise in each and every one of us. It's one of the reasons he loves us so very much, because he built us. In our lives, we strive to become more like God. Remember, it's not a poof. We don't need that. We don't want that, actually. It's not a poof and done type of situation. It's a situation in which it takes time. Small lessons, sometimes big ones, that occur over a lifetime of learning and growing. If we're to build ourselves to be more like God, it's not an overnight project, is it? It's one that takes constant effort, application, learning. It takes lots of trying. It even takes a lot of failing, too. Getting hurt occasionally, recovering, growing. But bit by bit, we learn lessons to God has planned for us. Now think about this. How many of you know how to ride a bike? Or tried something like that? How many skint knees did you get when you rode a bike or learned how to ride a bike? Probably a lot, right? And that's just something simple. Now imagine the lessons that God has to teach us to try to be more like Him. It's not a safe task. You're not in a padded room. You're going, you're going to get risk getting hurt. But we learn lessons. There's some hard lessons, but there's many beautiful ones. And the end result is one which nothing we face, none of those lessons could ever compare to be with God. 
Not for the earthly fathers. We may not like all those lessons. Or some of them are kind of hard. We're like, hey, Dad, I don't want that. We're like, hey, God, hey, can this one pass? Jesus himself said, hey, can, can you let this cup pass from me? But we know that what God gives us is what we need, right? And even Jesus knew that. Jesus knew he could walk away, but he knew to go through whatever God handed him. We may not like all the lessons, but they make us better, stronger than we ever were before. So, remember that God gave us a message and a journey that takes time. Digest, work our way through. The small and the large lessons that we learn or make, makes us more and more like God. And we don't go poof. We don't want to go poof. We transform bit by bit, lesson by lesson, day by day. Those lessons, they daily striving to be more like God, is how we get to slowly closer and closer to Him. It's how we're supposed to be. It's a short line from Isaiah, but it sums things up, right? This is how we learn. Line by line, a precept must be on precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. That's basic learning. Every child who goes to elementary school knows this. But we forget about it as adults. That's still how it works for us adults, too. No matter what stage we're in, there's always some journey left ahead of us. More growing to be done, and our Heavenly Father is always there to guide us, comfort us, and help us along the way. So remember, keep taking those small steps, those small changes. Place those votes for who we want to be. We want to be more like God. Those small actions add up to where we're going to get there. We can never be fully Him, but we can always keep striving more and more to be more like Him every day. It's those small steps, those small lessons that get us there to be closer and closer to God. Now, this is a short and simple message today. I think it was an early Father's Day gift for all the fathers. We'll make it quick. But, Any time is always a good time to join with God. He is the Heavenly Father. He is our Father. And so we always extend an invitation. There's always water available here or somewhere else. If you're ever ready, if you're ever saying, yeah, I've learned, I know, this is what I want to do, that's when it's time to be baptized. Take that step, commit your life to Christ. And then also, if you ever have anything that you need this, the congregation to pray for you, or anything you need to bring for the congregation, please come forward while we stand and we sing. With that, I thank you all for your time today. I wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. I'll turn it over for the invitation song. Thank you.